Hey all, Evan here. Uh, don't mind the fact that my room is dark, the power went out, and it is definitely not extremely late. Don't worry about that or any of what that could mean. Moving on, uh, I've just finished another film, that being the coming-of-age film, uh, Chasing Mavericks, and while watching that, I had the feeling within me the entire time that something was off, but I couldn't put my finger on what that was. But in retrospect, I now realize that the off feeling I had while watching the film the whole time was the writing of the film. The general story of the film was fine, but the moment-to-moment -moment writing just does not function as it was intended to. But before we get into the bad, let's start with the good. Frosty is a very well-written character with a very good character arc. He goes through good character development, and his contribution to the story goes quite well. His stereotypical mentor figure does not harm the film, I'll talk about what I mean by this later, and the emotions he portrays feel real and meaningful, especially when spoilers happen. This is an example of a good character. Jay, the main character, is also a good character. I've said a character about mom. He has drive and commitment, and that is shown multiple times throughout the film. There are many small moments that stand out and contribute to his character, like when he passes out in class trying to hold his breath, or that he made a poster representing his progress and hid it, showing that he is both proud of what he does and fearful of the consequences of his mother finding out. The chemistry between these two characters does wonders working together and working towards the main goal of the plot of the film. It is now that I will talk about what I don't like. The romantic subplot was poorly handled. We start by seeing the romantic interest as a child for the briefest of times and cut away to seeing her like four total times, almost all of which feels shoehorned in. It was probably included because they wanted the film to have a romance option for the boy who comes into age because that's what happens when boys come into age, never mind the fact that it contributed nothing to his journey to come into age. I didn't actually count the minutes, but I don't think she was given nearly enough time on screen to properly develop romance. I think it would have been better if they started with some romance already in place rather than starting at zero and working their way to where they ended up in the film. The boy with the bat, who is so insignificant that I don't know his name and can't be bothered to look it up, is just there so the audience has someone to hate and has nothing to do with Jay's journey into age. This film does not need a villain for its story to function. It can function just fine without one. He isn't a believable or even interesting character, never mind the fact that Jay has little to no reason to be here him in the first place. There are many other instances in which the film does things just to do them, and many tropes that get used to great in effect. And you know what? I'm about to go on another angry rant. For starters! It is here that my camera ran out of space and didn't record anything else. So instead I will be talking to you as a disembodied, not nearly as angry voice. Please enjoy these pictures of bunnies and other animals scrolling by as Sir Ferris Wipeout plays in the background and I continue talking to you. At the beginning of the film, Jay demonstrates an uncanny ability to time waves all untaught and at the age of like eight. I find this to be a great violation of my suspension of disbelief, and to top it all off, this fact never becomes relevant to the film again, so it just sits there, ruining my suspension of disbelief. Another thing is that the initial hostility of Frosty towards Jay plays too hard into the unwilling mentor stereotype, creating unnecessary awareness that this is a coming-of-age film. There are more genre tropes, like the mentor just barely accepting the student, the initial training not being surfing to begin with, the unrealistic portrayal of high school students, the mentor having a distaste for romance, and the forcing of Jay to choose between romance and his goal, and in the end the choice not having mattered at all in the slightest that each take you out of the film, and I believe that the film could have done without these, especially the romantic subplot. Well, anyways, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Until next time, salute!